Good afternoon, everyone. Am I audible? Visible also? Good. So, first of all, thank you to organizing team for inviting. I can see two challenges. A, to complete the presentation in 15 minutes. B, to keep the audience alert and awake, you know, because post lunch session, it's really challenging to, you know. So, uh, I'm going to talk about, uh, on, talk on the financial sustainability of aggregator model. Uh, especially, I'll be talking on auto rickshaw. But before I talk on the financial uh, sustainability of auto rickshaw aggregator, I would like to, you know, take you through what basically we are doing. So, you can see the logo, that's G Auto, you know, G Auto, it's auto rickshaw. Uh, so, what basically G Auto is doing? Uh, even before what G Auto is doing, I would like to, you know, uh, take you through what is basically auto rickshaw. So, uh, since I'm in India, I can understand most of us understand what is auto rickshaw. Uh, it becomes diff difficult when I go to, you know, some other country and I say auto rickshaw, and then I have to describe them. There are three wheeler motorized, you have, you know, one front wheel, two rear heels, etc. And then I have to show this picture that this is called auto rickshaw. So, uh, auto rickshaw, what is the importance of auto rickshaw, you know, in our transportation service? Let's understand this thing. What is basically this tiny vehicle, you know, probably hardly three people, uh, a driver, if, you know, uh, put a lot of effort here, stuff three people in this tiny auto rickshaw. The shape of this rickshaw, this you can understand. Where does it stand when we talk transportation service in Indian context? So to understand this, let us compare this auto rickshaw with the largest transportation service of India. So what is the largest transportation service of India? Largest? Indian Railways? Good. So let us compare this tiny vehicle. Probably the size of this auto rickshaw would be smaller than even a compartment of a coach of a train, right? So where does this small auto rickshaw stand when we say that the largest transportation, the largest, we say this is the second largest of all railway, the second largest Indian railway, second largest railway of all. In terms of employment, if you see, this is seventh largest in the world. So what is the fleet size? What is the fleet of Indian railways? It's around 12,000 trains we have, passengers trains we have in India. Which of is, how many auto rickshaws we have in India? 50 lakh auto rickshaw. Let's take how many passengers, the largest transportation of India, how, how, many, how many passengers it carries a day? It's 2.5, around 2.5 crore. And auto rickshaw, around 24 crore. <laughs> Let's take other, what is direct employment by Indian railways? It's 13 lakh, 1.3 million. How, how, many, how many for auto rickshaw? 60 lakhs, you know, because some of the rickshaw they apply during night also. So we compare if 50 lakh auto rickshaw is there, it, it is around 60 lakh people are directly employed by auto rickshaw sector. Now let's talk about revenue. What is the revenue collection by Indian Railways for, from passengers? I'm only talking from passengers, you know, this thing, around 45,000 crore. And Indian and Bharati auto rickshaw, 1 lakh 80,000 crore, right? Let's look at the you know, impact on exchequer. What is that Indian Railways gives to exchequer? It's loss of 25,000 crore. And auto rickshaw, it's 9,000 crore profit. Profit when I talk, it's like every day morning when auto rickshaw goes, you know, on petrol pump and CNG pump, it gives 30%, you know, in terms of what to government. That goes directly to a state government and central government kitty. So that's the, now, what is the support we are providing to auto rickshaw and Indian Railways? Go to city, you know, go to any city across India. You have railway stations, you have, you know, uh, railway lines spread across country. Do you, have you seen any even, even a Ran Basira kind of place for auto rickshaw? Nowhere, not even a stand, you know. So, having so much of social and financial impact of auto rickshaw, what do we keep reading? Like we heard about uh, our chair, uh, Mr. Sachdeva, I was talking also, and the previous speaker that there is negative perception about auto rickshaw. In spite of so much of financial, social, you know, economic impact of this sector, what we keep reading every day about auto rickshaw is this kind of news, you know. Rickshaw driver has looted somewhere, he has robbed somewhere, he has kind of, so this is a front page news, you go across country, you find in one other city, you'll find, you know, this kind of news about auto rickshaw. Now the question is, is it fake news? No. 
These are reality. This is happening across country, you know, because of the lack of professionalism in the sector, because lack of training, lack of loyalty, customer loyalty. You find that rickshaw drivers they be, they, be, they, be, they behave the way they want. So I was one of the victims, you know, of unprofessional approach of a rickshaw driver long back when I was doing my MBA from Ahmedabad at the gate of Ahmedabad in Ahmedabad itself, you know. Uh, I was overcharged by a rickshaw driver. Uh, we are going for a dinner. And from I am gate to hotel, uh, we, I, I was sitting in a rickshaw that the guy charged only five rupees. While returning, another rickshaw driver we caught and like we were a group of students and he charged 35 rupees. So it's a 10 rupees difference, you know, and it pinches when you're a student and, you know, depending on parents' money. So 10 rupees different, it pinches. And so a, why 10 rupees difference? And the guy was very rude. He started, you know, this is the amount you have to pay and kind of. I paid him and then I started thinking, is there any way that we can organize this sector? It was way back 2008. I was just doing, I was about to pass, I was complete my second year of MBA. And I started working on this with 15 auto rickshaw from the gate of IAM. In 2009, we inaugurated this uh, from my pocket money. Today, we are operating in three states, Gujarat, Delhi, and Haryana, with a fleet of 21,000 auto rickshaw drivers. Now, what basically we are doing with this project? We are trying to solve the problems of rats. So rats, when you say, we say refusal, accessibility, transparency, and safety. So this is the, these are the problems you go to any city of India you face. Uh, if you remember 2011 is, I think 11 or 12, of, you know, when a 40 rickshaw driver, they refused to take the, you know, the students and then they boarded a bus and all those happen. So this is a regular issue. You know, every, every one of us sitting here would have faced the refusal is the biggest issue in this sector, in last mile and first mile connectivity. Accessibility of the rickshaw is again one of the issues. You do not find a rickshaw at the, you know, residential places. So you have to come, uh, walk up to the road and then probably you get a rickshaw and then negotiate and hire the rickshaw. Transparency of the fare, again, you hire a rickshaw and you get a surprise at the end of the journey and how much it's going to charge. That's what happened with me. Safety is an emerging issue. We keep reading about you know, what is happening in the last uh, paratransport sector. So we are trying to solve these four issues we take up and started working on this. Uh, we are using technology you know, to solve all these problems. Now refusal is no more refusal. You do not have to go to rickshaw drivers to find a rickshaw. So you call us. We started with calling because those time 2009, we didn't have application. Even website was not kind of uh, so much, uh, you know, mobile were not with website. You know. So we started calling system. So you call us and we will provide you the auto rickshaw which later on graduated to website service, then application and all. Accessibility, now you do not have to find out rickshaw driver. Rickshaw driver finds you out. So you give the address, rickshaw driver will reach your place and then you take him wherever you want. Before you board a rickshaw, you know the fare. Even in the call center, you can ask how much fare you have to pay. So the transparency came. Secondly, that safety issue that before uh, joining the network, rickshaw driver is police verified. We train him and we take through the process of training, etc. And then we take him to the network. This is how our rickshaw, if you just download our application, you see the on my app, uh, the crowd of. <coughs> so basically, we are not working only for passengers. We feel that the sector will not improve if rickshaw driver's life is not improved. So we are equally focusing on the life of auto rickshaw drivers. And we say prosperity, security, and dignity. Suraksha, samriddhi, or samman. How to improve auto rickshaw drivers on these three fronts? So we are working with the community on improving their life on these three fronts. So we, we are working with the banking to bring them in the mainstream financially. We, we open their account. We help them in getting the loan, etc. We train them on financial things. So we take the you know, different uh, uh, local city body, and we train them on uh, uh, on different, uh, you know, uh, uh, aspect of safety, road safety, etc., passenger service. So wherever we work, we work with the city, local city bodies, and with the help of them, uh, come to security part. Like a rickshaw driver, suppose he faces, he makes an accident, you know, so we take care of the uh, medical treatment up to twenty-five thousand of. Uh, up to expense if suppose he dies in accident up to one lakh rupees so taking the social security and financial security into the consideration we have been working with the community so it's not simply providing application based <coughs> service that you just book and get a, a rickshaw and you enjoy we also want our rickshaw drivers to enjoy the life you know with a better support system so a lot of government schemes are coming. These guys are not aware, you know. So bringing them in the mainstream financially, training them, and making them availing the 
facilities of the government schemes. So pension scheme and all we have introduced for the rickshaw drivers. Thankfully, our effort has been recognized internationally from several international bodies. Uh, even this platform I also awarded in 2014. I was awarded IUT award uh, by uh, uh, Ministry MOUD. So that's uh, 2014. We had. Uh, it was the project was inaugurated when we had inauguration. It was inaugurated by the, our current prime minister. Then he, he was chief minister of the state. It was so wherever we are working, we are working with the local civic body. That's the uh, one of the uh, we can say positive about that. We understand with civic city, uh, civic uh, uh, city civic body, and we work together. That what are the problem? And let us solve the problem of the auto rickshaw sector rather than simply providing services on the application. So basically, where does the role of auto rickshaw comes as a people logistics and how it how to make it sustainable for aggregator? So let us understand it. What is the USP of auto rickshaw when we talk about uh, people logistic? So you find that auto rickshaw is the cheapest mode of transportation. Today, probably we have been comparing it with several mode of transportation. And whoever compares, he says, even we are cheaper like auto rickshaw. It means auto rickshaw is cheaper. You know, so whoever, any international body, even Chandrayaan went and some, our prime minister said it's cheaper than our auto rickshaw, you know, going on um, uh, Mars. So it means auto rickshaw is the cheapest mode of transportation. Secondly, this is the safest mode of transportation because of the open nature, you know, you are sitting, if something like happen, you can jump, you can shout, you can, unlike cabs, cabs is closed door and kind of, so you feel always, you know, unsafe in a closed door system. Here it's a safe because it's open, you know, from, less pollution. That's one of the most important thing because you see uh, auto rickshaw runs for 45 to 50 kilometer on one kg of CNG. Which is to take the car and you know for maybe 10, 10 15, 15 or 20 kilometer. So this is less polluting, lesser congestion in a space of two car probably you can accommodate one, one car you can accommodate two autos. So lesser congestion on the road and the best part is that you do not have supply constraint. So go to any city, anywhere in the world, you'll find auto rickshaw at least. You wait for 10, 15 minutes, some auto rickshaw will be passing through, you know, passing by the bed. So that's a, one of the best thing that you do not have supply constraint in auto rickshaw. That's the USP of this sector. Now, when we compare that, how it is the cheapest? We have been talking nowadays, oh, this cab service is only these rupees. A lot of people call our call center and they say, oh, this call center, this service is so much cheaper and you are costlier. Let's compare that where, whether really they are cheaper or we are costlier. So this input data we have taken based on the facts. If you see that the comparison chart, here comes running cost of a taxi is 18 rupees. You know, running cost, that includes driver salary also. Running cost of an auto rickshaw is 7 rupees. Go to any city, it will be around 7 to 10 rupees per kilometer rickshaw drivers are charging. So even at the current uh, pricing, auto rickshaw is profitable and sustainable. Probably in some, some of the cab services, they are offering us 5 or 6 rupees per kg because it is discounted. Maybe 60%, 70% discount you are getting. The day discount is stopped. This is going to be three times costlier than the auto rickshaw. So the services we are getting today, they are discounted, they are not cheaper. Probably temporarily we are comparing that cab is cheaper than auto rickshaw, that can never be, you know, cab can never be cheaper than auto rickshaw. So looking at this, let's say that how this can be sustainable. Let's take the example of, a, you know, a city, any, any, any typical city and catch a, and, and take, you know, a niche area that if I'm an aggregator, I'm just going to cater the, you know, some niche area. A niche area will be that people going and coming from railway station, going and coming from airport, bus stop, and maybe some tourist places. If just I'm catering, you know, passengers of these four places, am I going to be sustainable? And what is the kind of, you know, break-even or revenue we can get? So let's take example of Ahmedabad. We are operating in Ahmedabad. This is the number of people commuting in Ahmedabad from G GSRTC, we say, it's a public town here, government, around 2 lakh people in Ahmedabad or from and to Ahmedabad. Private buses will be slightly lesser. Railways, 1.5 lakh. Airport, around 10,000 people. So altogether, you see, around 5 to 6 lakh people are traveling. Let's say 10% people travel from GSRTC using your aggregation you know, services. 
10 percent because it's a middle class lower middle class people will be or you know poor class people will also be traveling from gsrtc who may not be preferring you know aggregation call center or app based you know technology based system so let's say 10 percent people traveling by bus uh, private buses would be around slightly higher similarly railways and airports so you have around 1.25 lakh of people a day traveling you know using aggregator services now if aggregator is charging just 5 rupees for providing the service this is over and above the meter rickshaw his revenue per month is going to be per, per year if you see it's going to be around 20 to 25 crores now this take one city if you scale reach this scale the revenue is going to be just at the rate of 5 rupees per booking you know and this is the potential around 40 cities are there of Ahmedabad size. Let us take it in a different way. If let's say Ahmedabad is having, Ahmedabad is having 1.5 lakh auto rickshaw, registered auto rickshaw in Ahmedabad. If out of 1.5 lakh auto rickshaw driver, this on an average one rickshaw plies around 10 people a day. So kind of we have 15 lakh trips a day in Ahmedabad city. Now on the, at the rate of, let's say 20% people uses your aggregation, model, calling, maybe application based or app based. We have around 15 lakh trips a day. And then you charge maybe five rupees per trip. That's going to be your revenue for, you know, from one city. And there are 40 cities of Ahmedabad kind of size. So what is basically different? Why the scale is not going up to this level? So what we have found from our experience that the penetration of a smartphone, because for this, the service cannot run on call center base at this cost. So you need automated system. For that, you need a smartphone with a driver, and that is very low as of now, which is increasing. Penetration of a smartphone is also lower with the user segment. You know. Other thing, internet penetration to the user segment and slow speed. Because of that, most of the time people leave and they call, they try to call or they try to catch the rickshaw on the road. So the speed of the internet and then education level of the driver and availability of auto rickshaw on the road. So people find auto rickshaw on the road, so they prefer, okay, let me catch this rickshaw. He will, you know, and so in, instead of calling or booking through app, they probably catch a rickshaw available on the road. Above all, the predatory prices, what we have been talking, that people are trying to, you know, bring auto cab prices, less than auto rickshaw, that is going to be, that is currently one of the biggest deterrent uh, for the aggregator, and that is stopping us to reach the scale. The next thing, to make this more sustainable, more profitable, we have come up, uh, G Auto has come up with electric and solar auto rickshaw. So as of now, you will be finding, go to any city, you find electric uh, rickshaw. We brought basically electric auto, which is similar to <coughs> auto, but it is, it runs on electricity and solar. So that's the running cost is going to be drastically lower with these vehicles. Secondly, the dependability on electricity should be lesser for that. We added solar on that so that they can run for more kilometer. And, uh, uh, the, and this can be, you know, uh, the service can be extended to rural areas also where the electricity availability is lesser. We feel we, that with this kind of operational efficiency, if you bring new kind of vehicle efficiency in the auto rickshaw and uh, yeah. we reach out to more people, yeah. the service is going to be, you know, it's, this is going to be future and more and more people are going to use. This is going to be a very profitable uh, mode of transportation. Thank you. Thank you for your present hearing.